If you're feeling God call you to pivot life as you know it by leaving your career plans to start an online business and you're terrified of how you'd ever actually pull that off, then you're a mama with a calling and this is the podcast for you. Here's where we'll talk about everything from choosing the right business and running it as a mom to biblical inspiration and motivation to conquer your fears. Because even though it's causing you some anxiety, you're also excited because you know God's calling you to it. And that means you're headed to a life with more joy, fulfillment, and purpose like you've always wanted. Hi, I'm Alexia Carrillo, fellow Mama with the Calling, and I'm passionate about helping other moms like you step into their calling and not stay stuck in their career for fear of going against the grain. I believe it's okay to pivot and follow God's calling on your life without the guilt or shame for not doing what the world says you should do. This is the Mama with the Calling podcast where we'll figure out how you can actually make this wild calling on your life become a reality. Let's grab some coffee and dive in. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mama with the Calling podcast. This is Alexia. My voice sounds weird again because sinuses, allergies, all the things. I don't feel bad. I just sound odd. So getting past that, I wanted to come on here and introduce you to today's guest on the podcast, which is a good friend of mine, Bridgette Heller. Um, She has the podcast, The Strong and Capable. You may have heard of her. She's on Instagram, same thing, Strong and Capable. And we actually met um, last fall in a class that we took together online. And we just became fast friends because she is a believer like I am. And we're all about business and, and impacting women and all the things. So I asked her if she wanted to be on my podcast to share her story of stepping out in faith to do big things in her life, such as starting her her online business, her podcast, etc. So Bridgette was born in Alaska, actually, but then she was raised all over the Western United States. And she is determined to share life changing mindset techniques to her strong and capable community with radical encouragement. She has a recipes to success workshop. And she also has the membership group, the awake community, where she goes over various ways to overcome negative self-talk and really learn how to love yourself and embrace who you really are so that you can say yes to life. Um, she also has her podcast, like I mentioned, The Strong and Capable, and she has amazing guests on there and talks about a number of topics that are going to be so impactful for you guys as you are stepping into being an entrepreneur, as you're saying yes to your calling for for whatever God's calling you to do. Because if you don't believe in yourself, if you're having all this negative self-talk, imposter syndrome, etc., it's going to be really hard to say, yes, God, I'm here. So what Bridgette is talking about, what she's sharing, what she dives into is so crucial as you are following your calling. Bridgette is a mom to three independent kids. She's got Um, You know, she's doing all the things she's involved in her church. She's got other businesses besides the one she's doing now. She has been married for 19 years. I think Bridgette's personality, her adventure seeking, she's curious. She's passionate about what she's talking about. And she really believes in this stuff. And she cares so much about helping others who feel kind of left out, who feel like they are not quite normal or trendy. She's so passionate about wanting to help you live a full life with all the happiness that you could have. So with that said, um, I'll go ahead and let you hear the interview with Bridgette Heller from The Strong and Capable, and let's dive into it. Hi, today on the podcast, we have Bridgette Heller, and I'm so excited that you're here today. Thank you for coming on the podcast. I am so excited to be here. I always love talking with you. It's my favorite times of the day because we talk all day long, you and I. (laughs) <laughs> yes. And we actually met in um, a program with Kathy Heller made to do this back in the fall. And once we started talking, I was like, we are just, we have a lot to talk about. And I'm so excited to have you on my podcast because the way, the reason I asked you on the podcast was to talk about your journey from quitting your job to working for yourself. Because on this podcast, I, I really want moms to know, it doesn't mean moms, but women, people to know that it's possible and it's scary. And I want to talk about, you know, interview people like you to talk about what you were thinking when you made that transition, how did you get the courage, all of that? So let's start there. 
um, with when you were working your job and when you felt like you were called to leave or change? Okay. Well, I think it's an interesting journey. I was thinking about, um, you know, being called to leave and it was very, very, very emotional to work through this process. I mean, I think I questioned every part of my soul and my whole life experience and what did it mean? And how is this moment coming together? And when I got the job, we had just bought a house. And I had interviewed for this job. It kind of came out of nowhere. I had gone to, it was at a school. I'd gone to the school and said, hey, my son's struggling. You know, can I help him? What can I do? And then in the middle of this talk with the principal, I said, oh, by the way, are you guys hiring for anything? Because I'm looking for a job. And <laughs> she's like, no, but I'll let you know. And I had at the time, I had like four or five different companies I was working for as brand ambassadors and doing different things. And I wanted to consolidate for my family. I wanted one consistent job that would help just take away all the stress and the chaos that came from a lot of different little things. And two days later, the superintendent called me and said, we think you're our person. We didn't know you were looking. Come in here. We want you as the assistant director of our preschool. So I went in. They're crying. I'm crying. We're talking about church and they're Catholic. I'm LDS. We're talking about all the stuff, all the scriptures. And it was like the spiritual moment. And I was like, yes, this is where I'm supposed to be. And then they called and the amount they wanted to pay me was like, it was hourly rate right, at first. It was like four or $5 higher than I thought it would be. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is a miracle for me. This is like life changing for our family, right? So I went and within six months of being there, I was not in a good place because this was a company that expected you to live them, live everything there. We, he, they even joked with me, you might as well pull up a cot because you're here like 18 hours a day, like crazy, crazy hours because we were trying to redo the school and bring in new teachers and do training. And I thought I was going to be like an assistant, you know, getting the coffee and writing the stuff. And I ended up running the school. And so it, it was a whole different emotional journey. So it was exhausting. And instead of being with my family, like I thought I was going to be, I was never with my family. And I was being stretched, which is great, right? Like stretching hurts, but it's so good for us. So I was learning new computer programs and new different things that I wasn't good at, but um, it really quickly turned bad. But because it was such a blessing, I was like, well, there's a reason I'm here. So I'll keep holding on. So I held on for four years. Four years I was there. And yeah. I was just like... Yeah, like, there's a reason this was a miracle. It was supposed to be I'm here. So I just keep holding on. And my position just kept changing and changing. And I brought in oh, well over $100,000 just in fundraising for the school and like all sorts of things. But it was never enough, like never enough for them. So that's when I started thinking, man, if I'm never going to be enough, is this worth this? I feel like I have no value and I know that's not who I am is a deep belief that I'm a child of God. So I know I have value, but this, this is like my, my self-esteem, my self-worth, my self-identity is just day by day dwindling here. It was crazy. That is wild because like that whole journey, right? It, it seems like such a perfect place to be. But it's like, of course, mm -hmm. God's putting me here. And maybe looking back, God was putting you there. Um, but I'm wondering in that four years, because I, I did something similar, not with the, but like staying in a job longer than I knew I needed to. So mm -hmm. did you feel like you were, why do you think you stayed? Is it because you were, like you said, you were holding on to, well, God gave me this, so it's going to get better. Like, what were you, um, or did you just not know what else to do? Like where else to go? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons I stayed because I did. I felt like God put me here. So this must be where I'm supposed to be. He put me here. He did. And every time I think I need to quit, I'm like, well, am I letting down God? Am I like telling him your gift wasn't good enough? If I walk away from this, what am I, what am I doing? And it was crazy because they even broke me down to a point where they was, I remember one day expressing something, some concern, some positivity. I don't remember what it was. We we're always in deep discussion and the owner looked at me and she says, I feel like today I know you're a Christian. 
I feel like today I know that. <laughs> but I thought, I don't think you get, you get, you don't get to decide that. I'm pretty sure you don't get to, you know? And then six months later, she'd say, you know, you're, because I expressed fear for how they were running some things. I didn't think it was going to be successful. She was, you know, Bridget, I thought you were a Christian, but Christians don't fear. So obviously, maybe you're not. <laughs> but that was like, they weren't even just uh, taking my time and my energy. They were like poking at my soul and my heart and my beliefs. And so I thought, I just kept thinking, maybe the Lord wants me to really understand these things about myself. Maybe I'm supposed to go through this process and be refined. And maybe, I don't know, but he put me here. And then, of course, I loved the kids. Like, I loved the kids. I wanted to be with them. And I loved feeling like I was making a difference for them because, you know, when a teacher's frustrated because a kid's throwing a tantrum or whatever and they bring him out and I get to feed that little soul just love and it's going to be okay and this is a moment. And that was really filling for me to be loving on those kids and what felt like a very Christ-like way, just so pure. And so I think that's why I held on was the kids. And I just kept thinking, this, this is it, right? I'm supposed to be here. So it just took me a long time to know that the Lord maybe had other plans as well as this thing. Yes. Okay. So that is really, it's such an important point about the kids because a lot of times we have jobs that are very honorable jobs. Like they're good and they're, they're making a difference in the world. I mean, I was teaching high school when I felt like I wanted to be home with my son and I was like, but these kids, I'm impacting their lives. Like some of these kids you know, I'm teaching them science, which may not seem like a big deal, but they thought they were like dumb. And I'm like, no, you're not. You can know, you can learn Mm -hmm. hard things and helping them with their careers, you know, all of this. And it feels like that can really hold you there. Even if, even if you know, God's calling you to something else. It's like, sometimes we let what I would say, like the world, like the world has said, this is a good job. You should be happy with that. You should be happy with the pay. You should be happy that you are making an impact. Like don't change something that's good, right? Even though in our heart, we know our soul, your your stage, it's like knowing that we're supposed to do something different and not even like even listening to that because we're supposed supposed to be happy over here. So let's talk about when, what finally made you decide, yep, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna do something different. Well, after two years, three years in the the preschool, I asked, I said, Hey, this dynamic is not healthy for me. I am not healthy, but I feel like I can help in this other area. And it was a different organization, but owned by the same people. I said, can you move me? Because I think you're going to lose me if you don't move me because I'm worn out. This is too many hours. Preschools are hard. Those kids are, I mean, who who can do a toddler for eight hours straight? Most moms struggle with it. Now, these teachers have like 25 kids, 25 toddlers. Like preschools are hard. Those are heroes, those ladies. And so it was an environment and the things, you know, you deal with in schools are just, oh, heartbreaking. And you, you know, because you were in a school. But so they said, I'll move you. It's okay. So I kind of thought, okay, this is a change. So I'm doing this in a healthy way. I'm not like spitting on God's gift of the job. Cause that's what I felt like. I felt like if I quit, I was like spitting on the gift and saying, I don't want it Lord, <laughs> you know? And so it's a change. I'm not doing that, but hopefully it'll be better for my family, you know, cause I'll be home more. I'll have decent hours. It's better pay. This, this will be good. And I got to the other side and they had a family member that worked on the other side that decided they don't like me. And she sat within five feet of me. And would literally put down every word I said all day long. Like someone would ask my opinion and she she doesn't know what she's talking about. Don't ask her. Yeah. I'd be talking to parents and I'd walk away and she's, she's not in charge here. She doesn't have that authority to tell you that. Like like, literally to my own, she didn't know this person that my siblings had kids there. So they would come you know, and she would be the person that greeted them. And she put me down to my own family. (laughs) Like it was just insane. And so day after day of having someone tell everyone else in the world, you were worthless after I was already kind of feeling that way from years of this. By November, my husband looked at me and said, Bridget, I do not care if we can't afford Christmas. 
you coming home and crying and going straight to bed every day, this is not worth it. This is not worth it. We need you. My kids, you know, I have three kids. They need you. We need you. And I knew he was right. I knew it had to change, but I, I had so many people that I felt like needed me there that I couldn't figure out how to, you know, I think we all want to feel needed. I know, I know we all want to feel needed and I felt needed. And so thinking if, if I quit, where am I going to go? I, I had no, no faith in myself at this point. I didn't think I had any abilities. I had nothing to offer. I have no energy. I was sick all the time because I was emotionally in a bad place. So it affected my physical self. I mean, I hadn't, I thought if I quit, who will want me? I'm damaged goods. So that was Christmas. Of 2019? Yeah. 2019. So I was damaged goods, but I took, honestly, COVID was the best thing that happened to me for my, because I took Christmas off at the school. I got to spend some time with my family. And with a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer, like all day long and like pleading, I remember like driving to school and listening to spiritual music and just like bawling, like, oh, Lord, I just feel so weak. Um, they, in the school, I don't know if it's like this at your, uh, the school you worked at, but every year we'd have to redo our contract. And so I got to the point where finally I decided, you know what, I'm going to just tell them if we can't change the dynamic with me and this other person that I have to be done. I can't. And so I went in there. I said a prayer. I'm sure I fasted. It was really intense, you know, building all my spiritual like armor, putting it all on, getting, getting amped up. And I went in there and I did it. I said, I am worthy of, of being valued. And if we can't change this dynamic, I do think I have to move on. It's time. It's been four years of this. And he looked at me, my boss, and said, I'm sorry. We're not going to change that for you. He was like, oh, okay. And that was it. That was, it was it. It was so crazy. And they didn't actually tell me officially no. He said he'd think about it. And so then I went weeks and weeks. This is what's crazy. I went weeks and weeks of not officially knowing because they'd think about it. And um, I started hearing from other leadership, oh, since you're not going to be back next year. He's like, what? I'm not. <laughs> you know, I started hearing from other people. Well, you know, when you do this or this or this, I was like, wow. So it was kind of a every day continuing to be beat up. But the Lord also led me to start a company. I started a company with my sister, a design company. We do events. And so at least while I was continuing to be beat up, I was building something on the side. So I was like, well, this feels good. At least this other thing feels really good. At least if where I'm at totally falls apart. I'll have something. And I think that really, I think that's really what helped me make the transition into having some value and some worth again was her and working with her. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I wrote down, um, weren't like, it's almost like looking back, you know, hindsight's 2020, but like, it's like all sometimes like the signs are there's a, there's this weird fine line of just persevere and stick it out. Cause God put us here versus he's giving you blaring signs. Like you don't feel good. Like it's not a place where God would even, I don't know if that's not entirely true. I mean, God asked people to go through really hard things, but it's like, you didn't have to go. And then it's like, he was like, get out. Like he kicked you out basically. Like you are not supposed to be there. And so it's like, cause going from one hardship to the next. And it's not like it's hard, like you're doing something good and it's just challenging, but you still feel like called to do it. Um, and mm-hmm. you said it differently. You said, we all want to feel needed. And I was seeing it as the other way of like the way, cause I did the same thing. I felt like, um, but it was, I didn't want to let people down, not in a way they need me, but like their opinion of me and um, sort of like a, a people pleaser kind of a thing where a lot of times I think a lot of us will just keep doing something to please those around us. Like if you thought your husband would, you know, not approve of that, or, you know, what would your family say if you turned down this money or whatever that is and then to go to that, that next phase where that woman was just like, literally just talking down about you is just, 
So I think it's, it's, it's interesting to look at it and it's hard to know. I mean, it really is just in that moment. Is this God wants me to stay here and I need to keep doing what I'm doing or is God calling me to something else? And, and I think that, I mean, we just have to pray about it and you have to get a sense Mm -hmm. of really knowing because maybe it was important for like to, for you to stay where you were, even though it was hard for whatever reason. And like, you kind of brought yourself back to a place where, like you said, you started this, this company with your sister and that brought you to a place of value. So then when you, when you finally did quit, what did you do from there? You, you didn't just only do your design company, right? Mm-mm. No. So it's interesting. Um, I was thinking as you're talking, when I was there, I would wake up literally physically sick on Mondays. Like, can I make it so sick? I didn't know if I could get out of bed because of the ulcer in my stomach. And like, I was physically could not get out of bed. And now today I woke up and I call Monday's possibility days because it's the beginning of a new week and I can do anything. Like there's so many possibilities. So I was just thinking about the total transformation that's happened in just a little over, just under a year, really. Um, Cause like, you know, contract ended in the middle of 2020. So really not even a full year. And I have completely transformed my life. But I, so I started the company with my sister and then I'd also already started a different company called The Strong and Capable. And I had done that in the middle of this whole journey. And I had done it because I felt no value. And I thought, I have something to offer. I know I do. I have so much knowledge on mindset and mental health and the owning who you are. And if I know when you serve, a lot of times you get back the thing you need. It's like how the Lord does it. Like when we're his hands, our lives are transformed too. And so I thought, if I can serve, in this way, just on social media, posting positive things and funny things and just help people love who they are, then maybe I can feel love for who I am too, again. And so I had started that too. So I had Deco Create with my sister. I had the Strong and Capable on my own. And I quit in May. And when I quit in May, last May, like officially last day of contract, my cute sister and my family, my kids, oh my gosh, I'm totally getting emotional. They showed up at the door and they had a party speaker and they laid down like a sparkly carpet because I love glitter and they so they they took like a sparkly tablecloth and made the aisle so I could like dance out and they had gifts and flowers it's so cute that's the best so the day I yeah the day I left I literally danced out of there because I was like throwing off these shackles these these things that have been emotionally, spiritually, even holding me back. And so the day I left, like, I, I remember my husband threw a party, literally, we had people at our house during COVID. <laughs> we threw a party, and he just smoked guacamole and brisket and all the things. And it was amazing, because people really did know at this point, they had seen it, my family had, had fallen apart. And so it was time to come home and rebuild. It was time to do that. And like people cheered me on. So the strong and capable, I felt very, after a couple months of recovery and building the other business, it's like the Lord hit me on the head and was like, Hey, guess what? That thing, it's time. It's time. And so I took a class. That's where we met. And I now have the podcast, the strong and capable podcast. We just started in January. I say we, cause, but it's really it, we, cause it's me and God. <laughs> it's like, that's the way here. This is me and Tim tracking it. But uh start the podcast. I have a membership community and I get to do every day, like I said, waking up excited about the possibilities of loving people and helping them accept who they are. And you know, my I always say we are a community who knows who we are, know where we're going and know how to get there. And that really has more to do with your divine nature than anything. You know, you know your divine identity, so you're a child of God. You know where you're going because there's a heaven, there's a loving God, there's all those things. And then how to get there, you know, a roadmap's clearly been laid out for us in the scriptures. So we get to use those to lead our life. And so I'm helping people do that every day. And that is amazing. Yeah, I think that, I think that God has a a way of, and I was just reading this this morning. Um, Well, I'm reading through Exodus because I really think there's a lot there for what I want to share through the podcast. And I was looking at how Moses was a shepherd 
and you know he's, he's fled from Egypt and he's you know he murdered someone so he run you know flight flees and he's shepherd and he's basically just like working for his father-in-law and I thought you know he was a prince and now he's a shepherd but even though you know it doesn't give us any indication that Moses is like I need more in life but it's like he's just doing his job <laughs> and he's his job is to lead sheep through the wilderness what do you know? That's what he ends up doing. Right. And it's like, you think that what you're going through maybe isn't important, or maybe you're just kind of doing the thing, but like, God's going to use whatever you've gone through for your neck. Like he can use it for this big thing because, you know, Moses had different phases of his life, right? He was a prince and then he becomes this shepherd and then he becomes the leader of God's people until for the rest of his life. So it's like, I think sometimes in, in our, idealistic world sometimes we think like we have to have our one thing that we're going to do forever and ever and ever Mm -hmm. and it's like god may be taking you especially in the early part of your life to different different phases and seasons and like moses was just minding his own business walking through the wilderness like he probably always did and there's a burning bush and it's like today's the day god's calling you to change and Mm -hmm. um so it's like you were going through the season and i just can't help but see and i'm sure you can see the same thing that you were put down in a place that was so hard that you want, like that is what brought you to the place of needing to help others. And it's like, you wouldn't have necessarily done that had you not been there. You wouldn't have this, you know, you wouldn't have that. So I think it's just really powerful how God can use our hardships. Like that's, I mean, that's why I have this podcast. I was a mom working in my job and I felt like I was trapped and I felt like I had no option out. I have, you know, a PhD and I can't possibly leave. And, you know, and then I did it and it's like, okay, I want to help moms. Like you, like you do the thing that you've been through um, that just had such an emotional impact on you. And so I think it's, um, I think it's just really awesome. I don't know. Like we can look back and like thanking God. And I think that's why, you know, Paul says like our tribulations, we should be happy about those things because Mm -hmm. like when stuff is hard, it's building your character. God is doing something in your life. Like whatever it looks like, even if you don't like your job right now, something about your job is for good. It's something about it. Mm -hmm. It's changing your character. It's doing something and it's providing for you at at minimum. (laughs) Um, and so I think that's just really powerful because in the, with the, uh, with the awake community and with the strong and capable, you like, can you talk more about exactly what you do there and who you're speaking to in that community? Yeah. You know, that's a, that in itself. And you know, cause we've talked behind the scenes about this a lot has been frustrating, <laughs> frustrating to me because when I was in fifth grade was the first time I knew I wanted to kind of motivational speak and lead people and work with them and help them find this happier place because a motivational speaker named John, by the way, he came and he talked about how our life, the hard moments or our, our thoughts about ourselves can be like putting rocks in a backpack. If we carry, we don't have to carry them with us, but we often do. So he talked about you're carrying shame, you're carrying hurt, you're carrying anger. And he said, every time you do, you're putting it in your backpack, you're putting your backpack. I'm pretty soon you can't even walk. You can't even walk because you've got this heavy load that you're just carrying. And he said, you don't have to carry it. And it's funny because I know that he's a Christian motivational speaker, but this was at a school and he wasn't giving a Christian message, but that was the first time I'd heard him, right? I think you don't have to carry it. You can put it down. You can stand upright and you can walk. And I remember watching all the kids around me in fifth grade being like, this is cool. I want to make people feel better. And then I was in fifth grade, so I don't remember that. Right? I didn't stay on on that dream because I, I am a big dreamer. I want to be everything in the world. I just I thought I was going to be a pro figure skater too. I have never figure skated more than like three times with you group. <laughs> so, you know, I, I want to be everything. So anyway, but like you said, I went through abuse as a child. I went through depression uh, multiple times with all of my childbirth. I have severe anxiety that I battle every day. I've just been like on a journey, on a journey, all these things. And I often, and then I've been around a lot of hard situations that I've had to directly be involved with and work with people through ministry and whatnot. And so I always thought, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? But here I am with the strong and capable in the weight community. And these are what I help people through is to see their struggles and know that there's not shame in that. There's not shame in your struggle. It's beauty. 
And like you said, we can be thankful for it and still literally celebrate each day that we don't have to carry it in our backpack. We can put it down, but, you know, kind of acknowledging it, facing it, seeing it, and then moving forward. What am I going to keep with me? What helps me serve myself and the world better? How does keeping these things affect my family or the world? How does letting them go affect my family and the world? And so I help people walk through that and work through that. And I was asking the Lord, I was like, because I pray about my business every day. What, you know, I'm supposed to have five content pillars. I'm supposed to have an avatar person. You, you and I have talked about this for hours. <laughs> like, what, Lord, do you want? Who specifically am I supposed to reach? And it keeps coming back to you are supposed to teach them who they are, where they're going, how to get there. Stop trying to do my work for me. Stop trying to do it. Stick to what I'm telling you and stop trying to focus on the details. So I really do. I help people figure out who they are. We talk about that. We talk about personalities. We talk about mindset all the time. I love mindset. Um, one of my favorite quotes talks about the greatest thing, the greatest thing we can do while in these tabernacles of clay is subject our mind to Jesus Christ. And that like mindset is so important and bringing it all into focus on Jesus Christ is the underlying tone, even if you're not Christian, because I don't I don't quote scripture like you do. My company's not like that because I don't feel that's where I'm supposed to serve. So we talk about, like I said, divine origin in more generic terms. But um, that is who are you? Where are you going? How are you going to get there? Whether it's with your family and business and in general with your spiritual self, that's what we talk about. Specifically in the weight community, we have monthly themes talking about personalities and your journey. And I'm excited about it. So understanding fully your personality, we're going to do lots of personality tests and like, really, what are your quirks? And what does that, what does that mean you have to give to the world? Because you're quirky, because that's awesome. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants us individual, not the same. So I don't know. Those are the things we talk about. <laughs> no. And I think I was writing down a note because I think, and I've said this to you, but I want to say it here. Um, because like you said, you, you're not feeling specifically that you're called to speak to entrepreneurs per se, but I think mm -hmm. that it's so, so valuable because like, how do you think this can help someone who's listening that is either in their job right now and they're like nervous, they're scared about leaving their job to actually pursue having their own business, or they just want to be a stay at home mom, whatever that looks like. Or they've already made that transition, but they're not fully stepping into their business. Don't you think that like knowing who you are allows you to, to like make these choices that might be against the grain and have that courage? Like, what do you think about that? A hundred percent. So um, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know how to get there. You can ask that question in every part of your, if you're just evaluating your spirit, your spirit self, you know, I'm a child of God. So I know where I'm going. I know how to get there. If you're evaluating your business, who am I? What is my business? Where do I want to go? What's the end result? How am I going to get there? This question that, and it, ironically, um, this is not just given to me because I feel like I call them divine downloads. This is what I used to say in high school to people. I'd, they'd say, Bridget, why are you happy? Like I said, I went through a lot of stuff. I think, cause I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know how to get there. And I was talking about my, you know, my spirituality. Like I have a sense of who I am, but I was listening to a podcast by Christy Wright months ago, like six months ago. And she says, you know what God told me? He told me I need to help people know who they are, where they're going, how to get there. And I was like, what? Like he's giving this message out to lots of people. It's just, how are they teaching it? And so I'm teaching this in a very practical, like, okay, so your family, who is your family? What is their makeup? What is their personality like? Who are they? Okay, where do you want your family to go? What do you want them to look like? Okay, now let's map out how we're going to get there. So this concept really does work for business. It works for family. It works for your personal goals in life. And we talk about, I guess, a mindset so much. So I have what I call the recipe for success. And I walk you through how to rewrite some of those limiting beliefs or those thoughts that hold you back. How do we rewrite them? How do we identify them? You know, how do we even know what's happening in that head? And then how do we rewrite them? And what, now that we've rewritten them, what is the intentional choice we're going to make with them? Because you have to make intentional choices or you're going to still be in the, the job you were in for four years, waking up every Monday, hating, hating yourself, 
hating how you're like our fam, my family was falling apart. So nothing was good. And I didn't want to go to church on Sunday because I was tired, you know, like, so everything was falling apart and nobody has to live that way. Nobody does. Yeah. And I think that, um, like you said, that the final like piece of it was like, you remembered the part of you that's like, no, I have value. And I think that what I, I envision is like, somebody, you know, there's all these things that come up when you try to start a business, you know, I've heard it said that if you want like really good therapy, just start a business because everything is going to come up, all the imposter syndrome, the fears around money. I mean, all of it. And especially it's, it can really test your faith too, because you might be stepping out in faith to do certain things, um, trusting a God to provide all of that. And if you don't know those things and you're uncertain about who you are, where you're going and how to get there, then it's, it feels like this big gray box. And so just being Mm -hmm. able to walk through that, uh, I think really impacts not only your whole life. I mean, that what you're teaching, what you're sharing can help people with anything. But I think, you know, for this audience, people that are listening, it's like, especially with their business, because when you know, when you start to realize that you're not going to be scared to go live as much like, or Mm -hmm. to, to like, they call it um, like flying your flag or flying your freak flag, where it's like who you are, like in the online space, there's Mm -hmm. a bazillion people with online businesses. You need to be willing to show up and be you, like you said, doing your quirks, perfect time for people to join because you need to be okay with who you are and people out there in internet world, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be like, eh, but like, there's a lot of people that are gonna be like, she's my person. I love it. I love that she loves pink or what glitter, you know, whatever <laughs> it is. Yeah. Whatever it is, like being you saying you're a Christian or, or if you don't feel like you're called, like whatever it looks like, we get scared. And when we first start a business, we think I want to include everyone and I want to um, not repel anyone. Cause you're thinking, I just want somebody to pay me something like you, you want to make. Mm-hmm. And so what often happens is you basically end up being vanilla and people are like, eh, it's fine. I don't feel strongly one way or the other, but it's like, you want to be like pistachio ice cream where somebody is like, I love it or I don't. And I've also heard it said like, you know, when you, you want to attract the people that means to attract people, you also have to repel. So you have to be comfortable with yourself, who you are, what, a, you know, like, all of your quirks and like, let that, let that show because people are going to come to you. And in addition to that, it's like being okay with um, failure because it won't mean anything about you. If you know who you are, like, you're not going to take it mm-hmm. personally. And then knowing who you are in Christ. I think when we understand what the Bible says about us, and I feel very strongly about this and I talk about this on the podcast too, but knowing what the Bible says about you, So that when you find this lie come up about like, you're not worth it, you can't accept money, whatever, whatever. It's like, nope, Bible says this, Mm -hmm. right? And you're working on this process. So I just think, I just think it's the the perfect thing. Okay. So when you talk about flying your flag and being okay with it and personality and taking, you know, therapy is business is the best therapy. So here's the difference. When I was at my old job, I, if I'd gotten a bad review or a negative thing, I would have been crying for days, like crying for days. I would have been, what did I do wrong? I don't even know how I can do better. I gave my all, like, cause I'm all in kind of a human. So my first free class I taught, where I do recipe for success, recipe for yes, it's my secret recipe for change. I taught this class. I send out a Google doc to get feedback and I got 10, you're amazing. This was great feedback, but I got one that said, I hate this. This is horrible. This didn't jive with me. I didn't like anything you taught. I just thought it was cheesy. And the best part about it was I literally was like, Mike, that's my husband, Mike, I got the worst review. And I was laughing. I was laughing. And I was like, so happy to get this bad review, because it was feedback. And I didn't view it as failure. I just viewed it as okay, this person right here, she is not my person. (laughs) She is not who I'm called to serve. And that's okay. And it was like, so I think I was giddy because not only was I okay with it, but I felt free from it. I didn't have to carry it. I didn't have to carry it in my backpack. I literally didn't even pick it up. And it was 
amazing. So I think that's the difference in where I was and where I am now and where people can be. It was great. And that's what you teach. I mean, that's how you teach people that yep. in your community. It's how to get to the place where you're okay with you so that stuff like that doesn't just like completely derail your life. Right. It doesn't mean you don't appreciate the feedback or the person or take it in because I always tell my kids anything, anytime someone criticizes you, it's important to examine it and say, is there a piece of this that's true? If it's true, what am I going to choose to do with it? You know, right. Live intentionally, live awake. Like, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to put it away because it's not going to serve me. Or you know what? I can adjust and this is how I can be better. And I think that is, that's healthy. That's healthy to stand back and look at it in a healthy way without viewing it as failure of yourself because it's not. We're human. We're learning. Mm -hmm. So good. So where can people come to find out more about you, join the community, all the things? Okay. So um, if people want to be able to, like you said, fly their flag and be cool with it. Then you can find me. Um, my Instagram is Bridgette, B-R-I-G-E-T-T-E, because it's a different name, dot Heller. Um, so Bridgette dot Heller on Instagram and the Strong and Capable. I have a free community on Facebook, but then my paid community, the Awake community, actually comes from Isaiah 52, where the Lord says, awake, awake, shake off the garments, like stand up, women, get going. That was the whole feeling behind my Awake community is I feel like so many people are wandering and letting life happen to them and God is calling us to be awake and to be present and like you said be who we are and if people don't like it be okay with it you don't have to be grouchy backwards so the awake community is we're we're awake we're living awake we're choosing to see ourselves to choose where we go and why and how we're going to get there we're choosing that and that can you can find me on the www.thestrongandcapable.com and um, that's where you sign up for the awake community is right there. Okay. Thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I love talking with you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the mama with a calling podcast. As always, you'll find the show notes for today's episode at mama with a calling.com slash podcast really quick before you head out. Are you loving these episodes? To make sure this podcast gets in the ears of as many mamas as possible, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. I'm going to be reading your reviews on the podcast, so I can't wait to hear from you. Also, if you know someone that needs to hear these episodes, grab a screenshot and share it on Instagram. And don't forget to tag me at Mama with a Calling so I can share it in my stories. Until next time, keep pursuing your calling.